Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the major sixth interval part of our ear training course. Now, major sixth interval, very harmonically pleasing sound, used a lot for harmonies and stuff, so it's a very good one to, to get into your ears and into your musical mind. Uh, sounds like this. If I play them together, it's a harmonic interval you can hear. It's got a, it's got a very cool kind of a sound to it. I like this interval a lot. Not a super common one, for melodic intervals, but there's a couple of real great songs that we can use for our song reference, which is obviously the way that I recommend it. Uh, you practice these things. The one that works for me the best is My Way. So, and now the end is near, because it's just bouncing between those two, that interval bouncing between the two notes. Okay, so you start, remember when you're learning to sing this stuff, you start singing, and now. Testing yourself to make sure you get it right. I'm going to talk about playing it in just a second. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of other song references. So My Way is the best one for me, but it's important that you find one that you know really well, okay? A couple of other common examples. Hush Little Baby, the nursery rhyme. Hush, baby, don't you cry. Hush, little. So we got there the... My, and now the end is near. Or hush, little baby, hush, little. Okay, so we've got two. They're both really strong ones. Uh, any of you jazzers out there might like to remember Take the A Train as well. Okay, that's a little bit of... You must take the A Train. Melody gets a bit hard. <laughs> Sorry, it's a difficult melody to... to uh, yeah, I don't know it in that position very well. Anyway... The, the first part. You must take, you must take. And so it's going up the sixth and back again. Such a great melody, actually, that Duke Ellington uh, uh, jazz standard. For those of you that don't know it, definitely should go and check it out. Anyway, so there's three song references you can use for the major six. And my way, Hush Little Baby, or Take the A Train. It's up to you to find uh, the one that you, it kind of resonates with you the best. That's the important thing is that you're kind of really familiar with the sound of that particular song in your musical mind. So when you're learning it, you obviously need to know how to play it on the guitar. And I, I think the playing it part is really, really important to develop that kind of the relationship between your musical mind and your, your ear and your hand, because really you want to be able to express melodies when you can imagine it in your mind that you can kind of get it coming out um, your hand, as I was attempting to do with the Take the A Train uh, a little earlier. That's a particularly tricky one, but, um, you know, uh, getting that relationship is really important. So I definitely recommend that you're practicing playing them. Now, um, to, in, to ingrain the interval into your mind, first of all, uh, I'd recommend that you use this one. So the root note on the uh, fifth string and the interval of the sixth will be back one fret on the third string. So in this case, I'm playing the note C with my second finger. That's the third fret of the fifth string. And the note A, which I'm playing with my first finger on the second fret of the third string. One thing you're very likely to find with these bigger intervals is that they're a little harder to sing. So but don't be disappointed if you find it a little tougher than learning your seconds and thirds. Um, the, what you want to start off with definitely is playing and singing along a few times just in the one key. Now, I'm going to do it in the key of C because I know that key works for me, but hopefully by now you've found a kind of a register that works well with your voice. So the first thing would just be literally can help to play them both at the same time as well, just to kind of center your musical mind on the sound of the interval. Hush, little, hush, little. And eventually stop playing the top one, so just hush, little, and then check it, hush, little. You really want to get that ingrained a little bit first, just in the one pitch. And then you want to try moving it somewhere else. So let's just move it up a tone first of all. So hush, now hush, little, hush, little is okay. Now, I can test it like that. Some people, because of the movement of the key, can find these ones a little trickier. Something that you might want to start off with again is just, if we've already got your, your second and first finger down for that interval, if you put your third finger underneath, 
So it looks like a little kind of an E chord. That can be helpful to kind of center your ear into that sound. Hush, little. You're going to find as you start changing the keys up, sometimes your ear gets kind of thrown off course a little bit and it, it struggles to find the right song and the right, the kind of the tonal center for singing that interval. Now, eventually you don't, you shouldn't need to do it so much, but uh, it can definitely be helpful just to play that chord first, just to kind of center the sound and then hush little. practice singing it again. Let's move the pitch up now. I'm going to do it off the tonal center of F, okay? So the eighth fret of the uh, fifth string. And now, and now. Okay, if you're struggling, play the chord. And now, that'll probably help. Let's go up to G. So you're working on your pitch, being able to sing, because it's quite a lot bigger jump with your voice that you need to do. Again, all of these things, definitely you want to be doing these on your own where, you know, friends and family can't hear you and start taking the mickey out of you while you're doing it because it's harder. You know, this is not super easy anymore, okay? It's still grand scheme of things relatively easy, I guess, as far as, you know, melodic training and interval ear training or whatever. But, you know, for, for many of you, you still might be finding this a bit tricky. So don't be disappointed if you find it hard. Each kind of step up is going to be a little, a little more difficult to do. So don't be afraid a few times. Play it, you know, you've got to work it in. And like I, you know, I've said before, I, I think a good amount will be doing just this one interval for at least a week, if not two weeks, spending five whole minutes, five times in your week, which is how much I recommend that you do this sort of practice, but just really just playing it and singing it over again and really getting it worked in. Now, the easiest thing is to stay with the root note on one string for a little while, but there will come a point where you want to start exploring it all over the neck. Now, from the thicker string, <laughs> Okay, it's exactly the same shape with a root six. Root five, same thing. Root four, we've we've changed the shape. So the the uh, I'm doing I've, I was just doing all C's and A's, which is a, a good way for you to test yourself to make sure that you're getting the different uh, ways of playing the intervals the same as to use the same two notes in different parts of the fingerboard, just to figure out. Eventually, of course, you want to be able to play the interval off any root note anywhere on the on the fretboard. But you know, baby steps and all of that. You want to be thinking of you know C to A, C to A, C to A up an octave. Now, from the fourth string to the second string, they're both in the same fret, but they skip a string. So we've got there the eighth fret on the fourth string and the eighth, fret, sorry, not the eighth fret, the tenth fret on the fourth string and the tenth fret on the second string. And as well, it's the same shape again, starting if we're going C to A, the fifth fret on the third string to the fifth fret on the thinner string. So you know you can do that interval, 8th fret to 7th fret, 6th string to 4th string, 3rd fret to 2nd fret, that's the 5th string to 3rd string, 10th uh, fret to 10th fret on 4th string to 2nd string, and 3rd, 5th uh, fret to 5th fret on the 3rd string to the 1st string. Now that's the kind of the most logical way of playing the sixth interval is this one that's kind of uh, kind of underneath it. But it is possible to to play it with a bit of a stretch. So I go back to C to A. I've got my first finger in the third fret of the fifth string and my little finger on the seventh fret of the fourth string. Now it's it's rare that you would kind of instinctively try to go to that interval because it's so stretchy. Particularly if you're going for a third string route, you'd be going fifth fret to tenth fret, which is, well, very stretchy, about the limit of my stretch. Um, but it's worth knowing that the sixth is there, particularly for your kind of rock and roll. Unit. That's going fifth to sixth. So it's worth, you know, at least understanding that that's uh, another way of playing that different interval. So your practice, five minutes a day, playing and singing this interval. So start playing along. La, 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 la. It's okay, get it into your head. Then play and sing the root note. La, la. 
and then check it with the guitar, okay? So you're trying to just sing it, and then you're checking that you're playing the right interval by playing the notes on the guitar. That combination of singing and playing is what will really develop this kind of little fretboard in your mind of where the sounds live and how the sounds are related to each other on the fingerboard, which is, I think, the part that's really important for actually expressing musical ideas out of the instrument. That's where we're kind of, that's where we're trying to get to, and it's worth always remembering the goal when we're doing that practice. So you're not just kind of doing it by rote. You understand the reasons why you're doing that sort of practice, and it'll make your practice more effective and it'll get you into doing the practice. Because, you know, let's face it, hey, that's, it's not the most exciting practice that you're probably going to do in a practice session, pr playing and seeing one interval over and over again. It's kind of bordering on boring. But if you understand the reason that you're doing it, then it makes it kind of more interesting to do it because you understand the goal and it'll help you get to a really good place as a musician. So I hope you're going to stick with it. I love to always read your comments uh, on the videos of how you're doing and how, you know, if you're struggling with anything, then I can try and help you out. So do let me know in the comment section. Uh, and I hope you're enjoying this course so far. Plenty more on the way. I'll see you for more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.